Hi, it's time for another math easy. So we're going to discuss well Newton's method of linear approximation, basically what it is, introduce what, uh, how to use it and whatnot. Basically, this is also called newton ramsden method. I think this guy also helped in in uh, making it for some reason. I'm not sure what it is, but anyways. So basically, let's start off with the quadratic formula. This will help illustrate why we need Newton's method and what it is. So if you have a function like this, you have a ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and we want to find the roots or what x is, basically when this whole function is equal to zero, then we just apply the quadratic formula, which is x equals to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, and yeah, you're probably used to this, but if you're not, you can see that on the uh, info below, the link to proof of this quadratic formula. But anyway, so for this function, we have the formula for it. But let's say we had a function like 48, yeah, you know, like this 48x, 1 plus x to the power of 60, minus 1 plus x to the power of 60 plus 1, and we want to find what x is, well, at the roots. Well, in this case, there is no possible formula here. So we can't just basically plug in a formula like this one. So we know from to solve for x. And in fact, the uh, Norwegian mathematician Niels Abel proved in 1824 that there is no general formula that could be given for the roots of a fifth degree equation. This one's x to the 5 in terms of radicals here. Uh, and radicals are basically uh, square roots or cube roots and whatnot. So anything that's power of uh, like between um, yeah, l between uh, 0 and 1 here, or negatives here. So so this one, x1, 3, that's what radical is. So basically you could write equations of this for anything that's less than x to the 5 degree, much less x to the 0, I mean uh, to the 60 here. And also, yeah, soon after, this uh, this one, uh, the French mathematician Everest Gallows proved that it is impossible to find a general formula for the roots of an nth degree equation in terms of algebraic operations on the coefficients, like, like the quadratic formula above if n is larger than 4 here. So basically we can't write this function here. It's actually impossible to write this kind of formula for something like this if it's greater than x to the 4 here. And this one's x to the 60, so we can't, we don't have any formula for this one. And also if you have a function, let's say like cos x equals x here, this one also there is no formula to solve for the, the roots of this one either. So no formula for this one. So how are we supposed to find this one? Well, if, what your calculator does, what you could do is basically graph the equation. And in this case, it would be something like like this one here. And then, well, this x, you could just basically graph it like this through it here and, and find it like this somehow. But uh, even then, how your calculator determines this uses the, either Newton's method or some variation of Newton's method. Now, I will show you how to do this right now. Okay, so if you have this, the x and y axis here, and if you had a function uh, like this one here, so we'll go like this, and we, we want to find like that, and you want to find the roots of this or this function here, because remember, if this is f of x, and we're all, to find the roots, we have f of x equals to zero here, and uh, this is how usually the fo formulas are, so you want to find when x, what x is when this whole function equals to zero. This is how the quadratic formula is and whatnot. So basically, how to find this this point right here if we draw this f of x and this is the y equals zero line is when the intersects when this this is true so we need to find this one right here let's call this r here and what newton's method states is you first have to find an approximation or just pick a point x1 so this is a random one pick that's the calculator picks or sometimes you have to choose if the equation is complex and they, and they can't really determine where it's closer to the, the zero here so what you do is you pick this point, or it, it gets picked, what your calculator does, and then from this point you have this this f of x value here. So we have f of x, yeah, f of x1 here now. So what what Newton's method does is it's it determines the uh, the uh, derivative at this point, and it should if you draw the line of it or the tangent line it should be closer, and if you draw it all the way down here, it should be closer to the root than where your starting point x1 is. So we'll call this x2 here. So this is number the tangent line. And we, we can determine the equation of a tangent line, because this is a simple tangent line here. Yes, and this tangent line, we can derive the formula for, because this is a simple line here, and this is just the rise of a run to determine the derivative, or th this would just be the slope here. So the, the, let's call this equation L. L of x in this case, so we're going to have 
L of X is equation of a line equals Y number Y equals MX plus B. So we're going to have MX plus B in this case. And we know that the, the, the slope M is just going to be equal to, well, the derivative at X1. And because remember, it's just rise over run in this case. And it's equal to the derivative of this point because that's where we're choosing our tangent line. It's tangent to this. If it's tangent, then the derivative is the same here. So then we have this value here to, to solve for what b is. Well, we know at this point right here, this is just f of x1. So then at x equals to x1, we're going to have l of x is equal to f of x1. So we'll go f of x1 is equal to, well, this derivative f of x, f prime of x1 times by x1 plus b. And rearranging for b, we get f of x1 minus f prime of x1 times x1. Plug this back in here, the equation of our line is going to be equal to, yeah, right here, just equal to this, this b in, in this case here. And if we just simplify this by taking the like terms out, we're going to get f prime of x1, take the, the slope out, x minus x1 plus f of x1. So this is our equation of our line in this case. So now to get x2, well, we just set it equal to 0 in this case. Because remember, this line goes to across the intersect here. So if we set it equal to 0, we're going to have 0 is equal to, yeah, base f prime of x1. The, this is the times x2 minus x1 plus f of x1. So rearranging this one, we're going to get x2 minus x1. Yeah, well, negative f f prime of x1 divided by f of x1. Actually, I made a mistake. The prime's at the bottom here because we ship this to the other side and divide it by the prime. Then move this over. We're going to have now x2 is equal to x1, just plus on both sides, minus f of x1 over f prime of x1 here. So this is part of the Newton's method here. So we have a closer approximation for the root. And if we go back to this function here, if we repeat the step here for x1. So instead of doing that, well, let's just do it for x2 here. So we're going to have this one right here. This is f of x2. And then cut it down here. And as you can see, this is x3 here. And it's closer to r. So it's getting closer and closer to r. So if we keep repeating it, it's going to keep going down here. So what we could do here, this is the exact same method as the first one. So x3 is going to be equal to, well, just x2 minus f prime of x to um, f of x2 divided by f prime of x2 here. And from that graph I showed above, you can see that if you keep going, or well, first let's just write this in terms of, well, because this one, let's write the pattern now. Do we know that this is just going to be x n plus 1 is just equal to x n over f of x n divided by f prime of x n, where this is just an integer value greater, uh, 0 to greater than, I mean, yeah, this is going to be 1 or greater than one here, so every time you have an x5, it's going to be x4, so it all depends on the previous one here. And as you can see, it as the limit of x, this one here, well, I mean, n goes to infinity here of xn. As you go here, this is equal to r, or our root. So this is Newton's method here. So so then we have a way, or this is what your calculator does, it just puts in a bunch of uh, value initially and then it keeps going closer and closer using this Newton's method and gives you a root of the function. And we say that basically this xn converges to r here. So now, uh, now uh, to explain uh, some limitations on this method, I'll just write them down here what the problem with this method is. So let's say you have this, this kind of function right here, let's just call this, this is x, y axis here, and you had this function f of x, but now the problem, and you're, you're trying to use uh, Newton's method to basically solve for the root here. Okay, so let's say your calculator picked a point like somewhere over here. This is, we'll call this x1, and then what we never using Newton's method, we just draw a tangent line across from this, and this tangent line is going to be something like this. So this is a new x2 point, and then as you can see here, if you, if you go scroll down here, this is going to be your f of x2 here, but as you can see, it's actually, this x2 might be actually further away than x1. So this is worse approximation. And then also, if you, if you keep going now to draw a tangent line, because it's all it is, is re repeat this tangent line process. So as you can see, if we draw the tangent line in this case, we're going to have it, this, as you can see where this one's going, it's going to somewhere here. So this is x3. So in fact, and this this one might be something somewhere around here, and this might be somewhere here. This is x four, 
and as you can see this or this skull this is a four here and as you can see this one goes up so then you have a tangent line across like this now and th this one is not even in the domain this is yeah, this is probably not even in the domain not in domain so as you can see this little illustration shows the limitations of the Newton's method and, and some functions they don't actually converge yeah and some functions they don't converge using Newton's method and this is usually when the f prime of let's say x1 is like close to zero here if it's close to zero it's close to approximate it's close to horizontal here because if it's more vertical, it's going to go closer back down here, so it wouldn't be too far off from where you started, so it should be better. So if this fails, so basically Newton's method fails in this case, and you would need a better approximation. Yeah, and you would need a better x1 approximation. So you would either have to specify it through your calculator, or you know, just have a different method that your calculator would use to find it. But basically, yeah, this is all for today. Hopefully you learned about Newton's method. In uh, later videos, I'm going to do examples showing how, uh, cases where they do converge and some examples where it doesn't converge and it, or it just takes really long to converge. Well, uh, that's all for now. We learned about this and how the calculator works and how to get the roots using Newton's method. And uh, well, that's all for now. You could download these notes in the Dropbox link below, like always. Let me know if that doesn't work. But that's all for now. Hopefully, learn and stay tuned for another math. E